Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arius, and today we're going to be talking about two massive biotech deals that went down in the past couple months, one between Beam and Pfizer, and the other between Recursion and Roche Genentech. I'll break both of these deals down and talk about some of the massive implications these agreements have, as well as what I've been doing with both of these stocks. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and leave any video suggestions and feedback in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with Beam's deal with Pfizer. Beam will get $300 million upfront for three targets, and has potential for $1 billion in milestones. Crucially, the three targets were not already part of Beam's disclosed pipeline. After this deal, it leaves their end-of-year cash balance around $1.2 billion. In Q3, they had a net loss of $70 million, but have had a slightly higher average burn over the previous three quarters of about $110 million. Even with a net loss of $110 million a quarter, that would give Beam nearly three years at that current rate to get treatments to the market and begin self-funding. Another interesting tidbit of this deal is it will leverage Beam's delivery abilities to target liver, muscles, and central nervous system. What makes this interesting is that it may require Beam's newly acquired lipid nanoparticle barcode system to discover new LMPs. Finally, Beam has an option at the end of a phase 1-2 trial to split costs and profits on one of the targets with Pfizer, 35% Beam and the rest Pfizer. This may give Beam more upside in the deal as it could potentially yield more than just the 1 billion in potential milestones. Now let's talk about some of the implications. First, it demonstrated great belief in Beam and these targets for Pfizer to pay a 300 million upfront just to get the rights for these to be developed. Pfizer is one of the biggest of big pharma and they know what they're doing. This serves as excellent validation of not only Beam's technology, which I felt had already been validated, but of the commercial value of that technology. Financially speaking, $300 million funds about 90% of the first three quarters of expenses this year for Beam. I see no reason with how much white space there is in gene therapies why Beam could not come up with three new candidates every year and finance much of their cost through these deals until some of their own treatments starts making it to the market or until they start to earn milestones with these candidates. This could dramatically extend their runway and reduce dilution to shareholders and precipitated a fundamental change in the way I see Beam, de-risking it drastically. Moving on to the other deal we'll be talking about today, and that is between Recursion Pharmaceuticals and Genentech, part of the Roche Group. This deal has the potential to be the largest non-acquisitive biotech deal in history. In the deal, Recursion gets a payment of $150 million up front, and then may collaborate on up to 40 programs. Each program has the potential for more than $300 million in development, commercialization, and net sales milestones for Recursion, as well as tiered royalties on net sales. If we do some quick math, 40 programs times $300 million per program is $12 billion in potential revenue for Recursion, with the potential for a additional income in royalties on the sales. I see this as an extremely good business decision for Recursion. One of the massive benefits that comes with their platform, especially now that they have reached scale with inferential search, is they can crank out new candidates faster than anyone running a traditional drug discovery platform. So fast, in fact, that they can never develop and commercialize all of them concurrently. I almost see it as Recursion's responsibility, if they have the technology, to find and develop new treatments, to license out anything above and beyond what they can take on the commercialization of themselves, so that these life-changing treatments can make it into the market sooner. I could see this evolving into a large portion of Recursion's business. They develop as many treatments for as many different diseases as possible, and keep only the most important and commercialize those in-house as quickly as possible, and then license out the rest to all of the other big pharma companies companies with huge budgets and loss of bandwidth. This may not maximize revenue or profit, but I think it's the right thing to do to maximize Recursion's impact on the world. Finally, my conclusions. Both of these agreements are a big step up for both of these companies, as they receive lots of money up front and give extra validation to their technology. They also show a potential pathway for each company for growth going forward by contributing to the next leg of expansion for Big Pharma. It also may be a way to finance their continued R&D spend until their own treatments can make it into the market. In terms of what I've been doing with both of these stocks, I've just been holding my B position for the long term. However, I would have added a whole bunch more by this time if some of my other favorite stocks weren't already on sale. One of those stocks being Recursion, which I've added to my position in this crash by about 50%, and I will look to add more if it continues to go lower. Overall, I love both of these companies, and I can't wait to see how it all play out long term. Thanks for watching. What do you think of Beam and Recursion? Are more of these deals coming, and what do you think they mean for each company's respective business model? Let me know in the comments below. Next video I have planned is some research into what Teladoc Primary 360 is, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching, and have a great rest of your day.